Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech, where we are currently in a situation where we need to deploy very badly. We're very low on funds right now and that's really to be expected. We do have a contract ready to go here and we're going to launch that. And what are we going to do in terms of the mechs that we have? This is actually perfectly fine as is. No problem whatsoever here except... No, this is good. We do not currently need to bring the Corsair. Now, what is the Corsair's role going to be? That's a good question. I'm currently thinking that it might be a replacement for, like, the Hector? I don't know exactly yet. We'll figure that out. We should probably get rid of the J-Centurion at some point, but I guess it's fine. Let's go ahead and deploy this and see how this is going to go. This is a battle in Badlands, and that's okay. We're not too concerned about it. We should build up a little bit of funding and make our way to another flashpoint, I feel like. I think that that'll be our best bet. Of course, we don't have the money to travel right now. That is something we will need to deal with. Those zombies were fairly expensive, but we don't have to deal with zombies anymore. That event is over, and we are going to head on in. And just go back to our old-fashioned shooting stuff until it falls over. As opposed to the zombies, which was shooting stuff until it falls over three times. That was uh, exciting, for sure. So we need to destroy the enemy forces. A Capellan leader has fallen behind on payments for their armored vehicles, and our leasing agent has been unable to repossess the heavily armored vehicles. We've decided that sending a more explosive message is the best way to ensure that others do not take future liberties. Commander, they also mentioned that the target vehicles are currently on deployment with a secondary lance of mechs. You can optionally destroy them as well. And there's a bonus. I do like bonuses. Command interface initiated. So that is good. Okay, do we have allies? We do not have allies. Good to know. And it looks like they are up on this road, is my guess. Or maybe up in these hills. We could deploy, like, over here, but I think we'll deploy in this flat area. We can head over here for some cover, make our way down, engage on the road if necessary, and there's a route up the hill. So, and and we will be in a location where we can send our fire support, our long rangers, up here for, for uh, LOS if necessary. So we'll just go ahead and drop right here and see how this goes. That's an Ifrit. Okay. We have a priority target, ladies and gentlemen. It moved twice in a row. Jet... The, uh... Booster jet boost, I guess. That's actually very convenient for us. It's positioned in a good spot. It missed its attack there. And it didn't fire any of its missiles. Hmm... These are the vehicles? Where's their reinforcements at? That's my question right now. Orders. Okay, so it's the Battlemaster that moves right now. We'll position the Battlemaster here. Roger. And, of course, we're going to be best off firing at the Ifrit. It's not going to be fantastic hit odds. This is mostly pot shotting. We're going to go ahead and use our Warlord to boost those odds a little bit. But, I mean, it's round one. What are you going to do? Giving them everything I've got. Get some solid hits, is the answer. You're going to get some solid hits. I like it. Okay, phase 22. That was definitely a reinforcement lance. None of these mechs move in 22, and the Ifrit already moved. Thunderbolt shooting at the Battlemaster. Getting very little done. I like it. Hey, watch the paint, pal. That is great. This is going to be the Griffin moving. And I do wonder where that AC-20 hit on the Ifrit. It hit over in this flank. Okay, that's almost completely out of armor. That's nice. I like it. And that was which side? That was its left side. So turning that around, that would be this side over here. Okay, so we'd want to move out and flank it over, like, over here. But we can't quite get into a flanking position. I'm still going to sprint. This will not do wonders for our hit, our hit odds. But our hit odds are already low on phase one. Or rather, on round one. We'll move the tag up to the top. I really should just move this up to the top in the mech bay. That's something I should remember to do. Excellent. We'll see if I ever remember. 
Some decent PPC hits there, but not where we wanted it. What's it's up, okay, Bob? though. The Orion will move in. Out. And similarly, we're going to Warlord. And... This could very easily be a kill here. Incredibly easily. Do it. That Ifrit, out of the picture. Vehicle trash. Wonderful. Okay, so they have somebody that moves in phase 18, but it's not any of these mechs. They do have a Sunder over there. Picking up a new sensor trace. Looks like enemy reinforcements. Yeah, we've known about those, Darius. So we know that they're out over here. Standing by. The Black Knight is going to sprint forward as far as it can. It needs to engage in a little closer way. than Double this. Time. I would like to probably fire that Griffin, but 29... Yeah, the Griffin is the target here. I don't like the Griffin as the target, and I'm not going to Warlord here. But we'll get a little bit of damage in there. The Mad Cat Mark II is a much better Warlord candidate, and we're going to position here. And we'll Warlord. And what do we got? 20%, 15, and 0 0.9. Okay, so we'll just do this number. That was a solid hit. Is he unsteady? Very close, I'm but here. he's not quite unsteady. We're going to move up with the Awesome, who is also a good candidate for Warlord here. 27% is not great odds, but I'm going to roll this. If we hit, the Griffin becomes unsteady. We did not. Not super shocking there. Phase 17? Uh, this is the Sunder. Okay. Sunder might do some decent damage to us. Is that a Gauss in this variant? It could be. There's somebody else moving in phase 17 off to the side. Just an LRM5 is not very important, though. We really don't care about an LRM5. The Salamander is going to step up over here. Copy that, Commander. Now, we could fire these in direct fire mode. 35% versus the indirect out here in 27%. I'm still going to fire up this way, and I'm going to fire at the... It doesn't really matter. I'm going to fire at the Sunder here. here we go. And we're just looking to shred some armor off of both. That was some really good hits there, actually. I'm quite pleased with that. The Sunder moves forward. It's got a PPC for long-range engagement, so that is likely going to be a close-in autocannon for the ballistic weapon. I'm guessing the PPC is mounted here, and then this is perhaps an ultra autocannon of some type. But we're going to move forward with our boar's head. Moving to position. And once again, we're going to try to hit this Sunder at long range, since he apparently doesn't want to engage at closer or at longer range. I want to eliminate him from far away, if possible. I'm even going to not Warlord, because Taboo doesn't have that. Feel my wrath. Ooh, that was a solid artillery hit there. Not so great on the LRM, but that's fine. Phase 21, the Griffin will move now, and let's see what it decides to do. Okay, a little bit of damage to the Battlemaster there, but nothing too, too major. Receiving you. The Battlemaster is going to move up over here. On my way. And we are simply going to fire at the Griffin. These hit odds aren't great. We'll give it a go. Yeah, we didn't hit. I'm not shocked. That is about what I expected. We also know that they've got a Fire Moth over here and a Centurion. Nothing too major, but we'll have to watch this back flank. Commander. I'm going to put the Orion up here. Our fire support mechs should be able to, to hold this, as long as we keep an eye on it. Of course, we've got a bit of a heat issue going on here. I'm not going to fire the heavy rotary AC-5 here, and we'll take a small overheat for 87%. I like it. Yeah, solid. Dual hits into the Griffin there. Thunderbolt moves up. Gets a few hits in on the Orion, but we're fine. Reporting minimal damage. Nothing too the major bolt. there. The Hector is also going to step Location forward. Confirmed. And it's going to fire on that Griffin. Small overheat that we accept. Locked on. Nice. 
Target's taken a critical hit. He's unsteady, but that's not a knockdown. It would have knocked him down with one more hit there. But the Awesome will move in, and the Awesome is going for the kill here. This should be a super, super simple kill. Well, this isn't on the, the flank, so it may not actually kill, but it will knock down. And that takes out the left torso there. Sunder moves in. That's got to be some sort of auto cannon. If it hasn't, like, I'm, I'm thinking an AC or UAC 20. If it hasn't fired, LBX AC 20. Okay, we can actually see it now, so that's good to know. The Black Knight is going to move up. It's absolutely going for the kill here. There we go. Enemy down. One dead Griffin. And now I feel like our short rangers should actually turn around and come out over this way. And our long range mechs can continue engaging the Thunderbolt and Thunder. Okay, that's fine. We don't care. Minimal damage on that hit. The Salamander is going to step forward. Once again, we are looking to eliminate this Sunder. No hits really there, but good armor shred. I'm reasonably pleased with that. That reinforcement lance feels very light. Yeah, that's an Irby. Okay, sounds good. The Mad Cat is going to move up. This is round two, so I don't believe that we can uh, Warlord. No, absolutely not. Slightly higher hit odds on that Thunderbolt. I'm still going to go for the Thunder. Nice, we hit both of them. And that means that the Thunder is now unsteady with a structure exposure. I love it. The Boar's Head is going to move up. And we're going to hit this guy quite hard here. I think we're better off with an indirect shot than a direct. Just because the direct shot may go past him and miss entirely. Engaging target. Extremely solid hits there. He moves phase 18, but I believe that we can get him uh, knocked down before then. I'm going to take our Battlemaster back to guard our rear flank. Phase 20, the Fire Moth moves up. We expected this. You need me to hold still for you? Okay. Awaiting the Black order. Knight, I would like to pull back. Who do we move phase 19? The Awesome? Yeah, this is fine. We're going to move the Black Knight back. Affirmative. We can Warlord it and shoot at this Fire Moth. We have a lot of rolls. We're expecting some hits here, and this being a Fire Moth, we are expecting this to hurt it quite a lot. Scored a critical hit. That is a very, very injured Fire Moth. Very close to dead, in fact. Thunderbolt moves up. Shoots at the Hector. Gets very little done there. I like it. I will be done. Our awesome is going to step forward over here with its primary goal being knock down that Sunder. We're not going to Warlord because we can't, but we are going to fire on this guy. And that should be a knockdown. There we go. That'll reserve him back to phase 11. Okay, I was expecting it to reserve him slightly further than that, but that's okay. The Hector is going to be able to fire on this guy, and we're not going to fire this ERPPC due to heat. But that's still some very nice damage into the Sunder. Okay, we don't care about that LRM. That's very irrelevant to us right now. Ready for orders. The Orion is going to step forward here and is going to go for the kill on the Sunder. We're not going to fire this PPC, but we are going to fire the Heavy Rotary AC-5 in X3 mode. Sink a small amount of heat, and that's a kill on the Sunder. Fantastic. That Sunder never got a chance to use its LBX AC-20. It's always good to see. What does this Thunderbolt got on it? I mean, we know it's got a large laser, some missiles. 
and we don't care about the LRMs on the Battlemaster. That's very irrelevant to us. This would be okay with closing in on. I don't, I don't care. Ready to rock. These guys grouped up at all? No. Okay. So we're going to step the Salamander forward here slightly. We're not in range for Guided Direct. We're close, though. We're just going to fire the Arrow Fours here. I got you. And try to shred a little armor off of him. That was solid, actually. We got a reasonable hit there. The Madcap Mark II is going to step forward over here. We're continuing to engage this guy at a pretty extreme range. Next round is when we'll Warlord. Oh, wow. Both of those hitting on 37%. That was... That was impressive. Okay. Not great hit with the artillery there. Mediocre with the missiles, but it was enough to get him to lose his evasive. That is a pretty big deal. For Funnily orders. enough, our Battlemaster moves before this Fire Moth. I can only I assume that's because of the sheer amount of damage that our Black Knight did to it. This Fire Moth is super duper dead. Target neutralized. Indeed. Yes, the Awesome is going to stay put, and we're just going to fire at the Thunderbolt. In fact, I'm considering Warlording here. And firing the rocket 20. Just for instability. Do it. We did miss one of those PPCs, which is unfortunate. And he moves in phase 21 right now. I was hoping... Well, I, I'll be honest. I just I didn't check when he was moving. If I had checked, I wouldn't have warlorded or burned those rockets. Because he moves next phase, and we really never had a chance to get him knocked down before then. So that wasn't going to be a thing. But what we can do is we can continue to do things like this and do a lot of instability to him. Nice. Watch my heat. The Orion is a little low on heat, and its rotary AC5, or a little high on heat, rather. And its rotary AC5 is jammed. I'm going to rocket 20 this. This should guarantee the instability on this Thunderbolt, for sure. Taking a shot. Oh yeah, that was a lot. I'm out of short range missiles. I would be surprised if that Thunderbolt moves again. Yes, Commander. The Black Knight is going to head down over this way to deal with the reinforcements. Phase 17 is going to be the Centurion moving. And there's still a mech over there, or vehicle, that we don't know about. Hit, we know that there is the urban mech and the centurion, but there's something else over here, too. Ready for orders. We don't exactly know what that is. Let's go ahead and warlord with the mag cat, and I wouldn't mind closing in a little bit more. Yeah, close in a little bit, and we'll fire with the ER mediums as well. We missed everything there. Unfortunate, because those Gauss Rifles could have knocked down that Thunderbolt. Confirmed. That's okay, though. The Salamander is going to step in here. Heat is high, that's for sure. But we're going to fire a guided... Can we reach a direct? No, we cannot. We're going to fire a single standard indirect, then. Let's see what you got. That was a solid hit. Into a knockdown. into that Thunderbolt, probably never standing up again. It's a Phase 16 mover that we don't see out there. It's got like an LRM-10. It's not very scary. Waiting for orders. The Boar's Head is going to hit that Thunderbolt. Direct fire sniper artillery, LRM-20s. This is likely a kill. Locked and loaded. Here it comes. There we go. Tango down. And that's going to be the Irby closing in a bit. Sounds good. So now all we have to do is deal with this backline. We're going to sprint up with our Battlemaster. No our Awesome is going to probably start going around this direction. 
I think that's going to be the fastest way to get there. The Black Knight can absolutely start shooting. We're going to pop out over here we'll into go. cover. And we do see the Centurion there. That's a Shayu. Okay. Good to know. We'll pot shot at the Centurion and see what we get. We'll Pretty decent. Standing okay. By. The Orion is going to turn around and head this way. It'll need to sink eat. Yes, Commander. The Hector, same thing. Okay. Throttle up. There goes that heat. Fantastic. The Shayu moves now. We'll see what it decides to do. Well, that was extremely irrelevant. It did manage to get a head hit there through some miracle, but we resisted the injury. The Salamander is going to step over here, and these guys are pretty spread out. I feel like I feel like the Irby is actually the threat here. It's got that AC20. Not great in terms of the artillery there. But okay. Centurion's got that AC10. But it missed. Sounds good. What's up, boss? And our Magcap Mark 2 is not going to be in a particularly advantageous position for a while. We don't need it to be. The boar's head will move around. And we are going to fire on that Irby. Sniper artillery in indirect mode. Okay, we got some damage on the Shayu anyway. And we did get a little missile damage into the Irby. That'll be fine. The Irby backs off. Sounds good. Ready for orders. The Awesome is going to continue heading around the hill. Next round, it should have an LOS down this corridor a little bit. The Battlemaster is going to close in as much as possible, which is only on the Shayu right now. And Hitaz are not great. It does have that stealth armor or something along those lines. But we're going to roll this, see what we get. Not bad. The Orion is going to sprint down the road. Affirmative. And this will be fine. The Shayu moves now, which is a little unfortunate. We don't get to use that instability. But it's okay. I'll be honest, I didn't expect one of those UAC 20 shots to, to actually hit. We're going to sprint in over down the road with the Hector again. We're just trying to get down here as quick as possible, but a lot of these mechs are out of position for this, and we knew that would be the case. We wanted to eliminate the other Lance first with our long-range mechs. Minimum damage. This guy's confirmed. The Salamander has one standard shot left, and we're going to fire that at the Irby and sink some heat. Looks like you're out of position. Oh, that was solid. My LRMs are out. Yes. Okay, the Madcap Mark II, down the road. Excellent. Yes, Commander. The Black Knight is going to close in on the Shayu. Move order confirmed. And we are also going to Warlord. We do have a structure exposure here. Let's see what we get. This is a lot of rolls. LRM ammo explosion into a dead Shayu. I like it. Mech destroyed. The Irby is going to turn around and close in a little bit. I don't blame it. It's not happy about its rear arc exposure. The, uh, the Atlas is going to move up and fire on this Irby again. That was very solid, actually. I think things that Irby is just hiding behind the hill, but we're okay with this. It can't fire its AC-20 as long as it's there. The Battlemaster is going to step forward, and I think we don't fire the UAC-20. That's pretty clear. We'll just pot shot the rest of these at the Centurion. Absolutely nothing there. I'm not surprised. And we'll sink a tiny amount of heat. Standing by. The Black Knight actually gets to move again quite quickly, and sprinting only nets us one additional hex. We're just going to step forward to here, and... We're going to fire our last round of Gauss at this Centurion. Target confirmed. 
Okay. I've depleted my Gauss rifle ammo. Indeed you did. The Hector is going to sprint down the road. Let's go. Receiving you. And the Orion will follow suit. Roger. Oh, that didn't sprint. Oh well. Standing by. The Mad Cat Mark II also heading down the road. Good to go. If I can actually move it. There we go. <laughs> that tends to help. I'm your spaniel. The awesome is sprinting in over this way. We don't have LOS on that Centurion. It's hiding behind these rocks. But if it steps out either direction, we will. And it did. It did step out. I like it. Skipper. Okay. The Salamander is going to continue firing on this Irby. Hit odds are not going to be the greatest, but we can Warlord this, and so we shall. Now, it's unlikely that this does too much. Yeah. That's about what I expected, in all honesty. I'm ready. Indeed, that is a miss. The boar's head will move up and fire once again on that Irby. This could do something, in theory. Mostly armor shred. Oh, is that a pilot incapacitation? I guess so. The Irby is just gone. Okay. The Hector is going to move down over here, and it has LOS now. ECM jamming. What, from Armac? I guess. We now have hit odds on the Centurion, and pretty good ones at that. Take it. That was solid. Inflicted some heavy damage. Awaiting orders. The Black Knight is going to continue to close in, and I think we sprint. Because we need to close in for our pulse lasers. Light them up. Ammo explosion, and that's that. Fantastic. So, of course, the primary reason that we took this contract was for the travel coverage. But that should still be fairly lucrative. We took very little damage, and we dealt a lot of damage. I don't know exactly offhand how much priority salvage we had. I think it was maybe not a lot. But hey, over a million raw pay. Not bad. Actually, that's net pay. Not gross pay. So I'm very pleased with that. And then as far as this goes, we have one priority salvage. I'll probably take the Sunder part. We got a Griffin part, ER medium laser. Okay, that we're going to keep around the clan ER medium. A clan medium heavy laser. That's a solid one right there. Ferrofibrous armor. We have four of those. And small jump jets. We don't care. Okay, sounds good. I don't expect this to be very much in terms of repair costs. I really, really don't. And we took no internal damage, so Yang should be able to handle all of it. Which means we'll be able to deploy again very quickly indeed. While we're waiting for Yang's estimate, I will say that it is about time to put a cut in here. So I am going to do that after we get that queued up and ready to go. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And let's see what exactly this is going to cost us. 60k. Do it, Yang. Fantastic. And with that, that cut does need to go in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will see you all next time.